Hello everybody, my name is Brandon with Tech Hut, and in this video what we are going to be doing is I'm going to show you how to import location data from spreadsheets into Google My Maps. Now before you get into it, Google My Maps is an absolutely fantastic service for any type of location data organization, whether it be property management, it could go as far as planning vacations, anything to do with location data organization. Now this is only going to be covering general importing and some of those features, so later on I will have a full-fledged tutorial on how to use Google My Maps, which will be more helpful for people using it to plan vacations. But this is for people with already existing data spreadsheets that they want to import and organize. Now this isn't my data, I just pulled this from a uh, open source website, a government website, Colorado Department of Education. I just pulled a mailing list for their school districts and this is what it is. So we will be pulling this. Whenever you have data, it is important that you have two things. The first thing is the actual address. This is what it's going to use to pinpoint the locations on the map. And the second most important thing is something to give to the title or the title of the place marker. Those are the two things it's going to ask you for when you import it. Something else that's going to be kind of important just to make it look prettier is uh, something to go off of to group locations together, whether that be through zip code, uh, the actual districts themselves, cities or one thing I do for my job is if I have a lot of properties kind of together that are related I'll call it a region I'll make a whole column with a region so they're kind of grouped together and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a sec so getting into it first I'm going to kind of clean this up a bit so I'm going to get rid of things that we don't really need for the video so this I believe is irrelevant so we'll delete those columns we have the mailing zip code, uh, fax, district size, and district setting. So I'll get rid of district setting. Do, do, do. Delete column. So anything that is important to you when it comes to mapping this, and it may not seem important, but things like the phone number, district size, that's not necessarily important in mapping, but when you have the place marker, you'll be able to see that data. So we're gonna go on, jump over here, all you do is create a new map, and you click on import. Now here, we're going to just download this really quick. So file, uh, download, download an Excel version, and save the file. Now you can import this from Google Drive, but I just wanted to do it this way real quick. And we are gonna drag and drop this right in here. You could do uh, CVS, Excel, and a couple other different spreadsheet files. It's gonna upload, and as I was talking about earlier, we're gonna choose a column to position your place markers. Now you can select multiple uh, columns. So for this example, I'm gonna be selecting the mailing address, mailing city, mailing state, and the mailing zip code. Click continue and then you're going to want to choose the column to title your markers. Now this will be the organization name. If you were doing like property management, for example, you, that would be either like the apartment complex name or the community name. But for this, it is the organization name, which you can see right here. Those are all the school districts for Colorado. We're gonna hit finish. It's going to refresh because that is quite a bit of data. And boom, this is all of the school districts for the state of Colorado. Now what I was talking about earlier with all the additional data is if you click on one of these place markers you see all that data. So you have the county, the organization name, all your mailing info, the phone number, fax, and district size. So this is just good information to have handy. Now what I was talking about earlier with the grouping by color is this right here. This is the uniform style. That's what's currently selected. But if we click on it, we can group places by. And that right now it's uniform style, so everything is the same. If we click on that, you can select a column to organize it. So every item with this specific piece of data will be grouped that way. So for this, I would assume that the county might be a good one. So we'll click on county and then it has organized it by county. Now, why some of these are gray is because there's too much data. There's too much colors. You can see all these different counties right here and other or no value is these because there's just so many different ones 
that there's not enough colors to do it. Now this is the districts for an entire state. I'd assume that if you're doing this for yourself or a small operation, you're not going to have over 73 different values that you're going to need to work through. But we'll zoom in over here just so you can kind of see how it looks. So all of these by Colorado Springs, they're part of the El Paso County. Over here are the Kit Carson County. So it just kind of makes it look pretty, pretty er. Um, if you wanted to, you could go through all these other values. You could give them their own color. And you can change the colors of these by clicking this or going over here. This is Washington. So you can change the colors that way. But there's only so many colors that you can do. And once it runs out of colors, it's going to make everything gray or make you go through and change it. So if you only have, let's say, five different items that you're basing these on, you're not going to have a problem. There's quite quite a bit more than that here. I'd say there's probably about 15 or 20 different color-coded items. Howdy, everyone. I just wanted to pause my original recording just to kind of show you an actual map I work with every day. Um, this looks a lot better than the example that I was giving in the video because this is my actual data for something that I do. Um, you can see instead of over 74 like we just saw, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different things. So there's plenty enough um, color codes to go around. And overall, it just looks good. I have the different regions, which I was talking about earlier in the video, sectioned, and everything just seems to blend together really well. And for my purpose, it is absolutely perfect. But that is essentially how you import data. Um, other things you can do, which we'll, I'll go over in much greater detail in the full tutorial of Google My Maps, but you could go through and you can edit this data directly on the map. So if you notice that an address is wrong, you can move it through there just by double clicking on it, clicking edit and making any changes there. If you have images, you could go ahead and add images. So you can do a Google image search and you could do Colorado and something will come up, hit select, save, and then it will add images to the specific data set. So you can add, for like this, you could add like a picture of superintendent for the district or whatever you'd want for your relation to doing this. Additionally, you could come over here, you can change the names of any of this. Right here, this is important. 21 rows couldn't be shown on the map. Fix errors highlighted in red on the data table. So that means that Google had an issue pulling some of the data. So you could either ignore this or you can open up the data table. Doing that, it will bring up everything on the data table that you can make edits through. And you're gonna want to find the items. It's probably gonna be under mailing address. So we'll shuffle through here and try to find any errors right here. You can see all the errors for this are PO boxes. That makes complete sense. PO boxes aren't really generally locatable on a map unless if they're set up to be through the postal service. So these are not, that's fine. If you have an actual error that you know what the issue is, you could go through. Just click and start making some changes so you can, whatever the address is and work from there. So that is how you import data into Google My Maps and kind of get started on organization. There's way more to this piece of software. Um, you can scroll way down. You could change the base map here so you can make it look a little different. So we could go like that. This is actually Colorado. So let's do an elevation. Do they have an elevation? Terrain, that'll do. So you can see where all the mountains are and everything like that. Um, if you have more spreadsheets to add, you can add a layer, and what that will do is it'll give you the option to import more data into this map, and, well, oh, you're smooth sailing from there. Uh, like I said, there'll be a more in-depth tutorial on all the features for this in the future. Once I upload it, there'll be a link down below in the comments. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down there too. If there was something important that you think I missed, please let everybody know. If I helped you in any sort of way, please don't hesitate to hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe. I upload general computer and software tutorials all the time, as well as general software overviews, product reviews, and things of that nature. Once again, have a great day, and goodbye.
what I think are the two best platforms that you can use as a way to back up photos and videos primarily on mobile devices automatically through an app. Now both of these services do way more than just that. They're loaded with features, they're loaded with advantages and disadvantages. And those two services that we're going to be talking about is Google Photos and Amazon Photos. Amazon Photos is